Hello everyone on YouTube. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here today. Um, I am so pleased to hear from you and to welcome you to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about stitches, different stitches, uh, Sachiko stitching, Kantha stitching, slow stitching, and uh, for the main stitches and embroidery. And what the differences are and what the main, main uh, common thread is, no pun intended. <laughs> But um, today, for, before we begin, I'd like to give a shout out to a YouTuber. Her name is 143 Handmade, and in parentheses, her name is Liz, L I Z. I will put the full content of her link uh, or in my content. So um, I dived into the history of some of this. Some of this I didn't know. Asashiko stitching, I know pretty well. But um, I want to share this with you because it's really super interesting, and you may not know it. First, I'm going to start with the slow stitching because I have been so curious, well, where is this coming from? And I and I have some books on visible stitching, such as stitching, and uh, it mentioned slow stitching here and there. But this, this was kind of really getting my interest because you hear slow stitching, almost synonymous to such as stitching or visible stitching which is from Japanese culture. So I wanted to find out where is this coming from and what is it exactly? So here, I'm gonna give you the history and tell you a little bit of the differences here. So way back in the 1980s, there was a movement. Uh, you might wanna call it political movement, social movement, but it was a movement called the slow movement. It was a protest really. And it was started by Carlo Petrini in Italy. And uh, it was referencing a fast food joint that was going on up, up, up the street. And in protest to fast food, um, especially the low quality of the food and um, just the whole culture of it was being protested. So, um, and the, the fact that people were making homemade bread and homemade this and that and foods and pasta and, you know, foods in, on their farms and in their houses, that was promoted. That was a keepsake that he wanted to protect and promote. So, um, that started way back in the 1980s by this person, Carlo Petrini. And then in 2004, um, Carl Honoris, if I'm saying his name correctly, wrote a book called Praise of Slow. So again, this was promoting that, you know, slower is a better because of the quality. And when you do things fast, right? And you know the cliche, when you do things fast, you don't, they may not be done completely. Anyway, this concept grew. So you got a philosophy now moving heavily from the 1980s called the slow philosophy. And it was referencing how things, when they're done slowly, you know, gives you time to do things with quality, to get a balance, to do things right, to do things in a meditative manner. And um that led to, so that led to, so the slow movement led to the slow food movement in the 1980s. It led to the slow city philosophy. I'm not sure the date of that, but it was a spinoff from the 1980s. And that was really promoting, you know, hey, build a building that is of quality and designed with quality of life, you know, designed so maybe a person can go sit out on the porch or they have a garden in their yard or, you know, it it's mindful of what the human being needs to have a quality life. Um, and this one has big interest to me is slow fashion. And uh, there there is a book called Sustainable Fashion and Textiles. I'd love to get this book. But the author's name is Kate Fletcher, and I will write her name down 
in the content also. Now, in the midst of this spinoff from the 1980s, uh, a quilter named Mark Lipinski um, jumped on board with the slow movement and promoted slow stitching, saying, you know, stitch one one stitch at a time and promoting the meditation. It's almost like a rebranding, you might say, of various uh, types of meditative stitches that are already there. So that's where slow stitching comes from. And that explains the kind of synonymous uh, term terms you might use with slow stitching. Um, now, um, st brings us to Sashiko stitching. Sashiko stitching, as you know, started like hundreds of years ago. Actually, it started in the uh, 1600s in, um, and it was, um, of what they call the EDO, Edo period. And, um, Sashiko stitching was, um, they were making clothes out of worn out fabrics, piecing them together so that they can have clothes. And this was the impoverished uh, persons uh, in Japan. And then uh, in the 1868, at that point, you know, after a couple of hundred years, they're piecing together these worn out pieces of fabric. Um, in 1868, it, they kind of stepped it up to uh, applying it to winter clothing and making coats, making uh, blankets, making rugs, you know, really um, um, built up their skill on the stitching. Now, Sashiko stitching is, um, it, it is synonymous to amending. Okay. That's, that's what we think of with Sashiko stitching because that is what it was used for. It was a running stitch that, uh, was used to mend. And, uh, it, you might, and so you you hear the word boro because Sashiko stitching, the visible stitching, a running stitching, is um used to create boro and um and boro is created for mending reassembling different fabrics or patching patching the fabrics together and uh so you might also hear the word boro mat tainai and that means too good to waste they used everything they used the threads they took they took out the threads out of the denim uh you know everything so um that that is um a very very um intricate part of sashiko stitching and boro creating boro so um with sashiko stitching you'll see different designs you will see uh crosses you will see, here i'll show you you will see um you will see the running stitch like this the vertical running stitch you'll see the horizontal stitch you'll see the crosses the running stitch is the inherent base stitch to all the other stitches later on actually um the sashiko stitching became refined so they were using more grids and creating more designs you know they were creating um more geometric designs even like um you know triangles for the for the mountains circles for the suns and um but the freestyle sashiko stitching which i adapt that mindset that is the mindset that i use when i create sashiko stitching i use the mindset of freestyle sashiko stitching so this is how i i do my horizontal and my verticals and i'm not using a grid this is just a vertical you can see there now with some of these i used free motion stitching which I'm not covering today, but I will like to cover that in the near future. I'd love to find the origins out of that when all that started. 
And here's another um, just horizontal and vertical. And um, so now with sashiko stitching, you find an overlapping. You will find things like this, a type of embroidery, if you will. Now, the difference is with the sashiko stitching, uh, they're not necessarily using the hoops and holding the fabric and doing one stitch at a time. These stitches are done several stitches at a time. Um, and But you will see different types of embroidery stitches now used with a Boro piece. For example, you might see the French knot or the blanket stitch um, or the chain stitch. So you'll see these stitches in with a Boro piece. So what I, what I did here was a simple embroidery freehand. And then I did uh, this piece with just a uh, running stitches, also free hand. So um, that's a sashiko stitching, and the um, it, things you can make with sashiko stitching, you know, from the quilts to the coin bags to the scarves to the hats. And um, I'm almost done with all of my hats and all of these, and I'll have a special video kind of going over each of those to share with you. So um, I have my notes here. I'm just double checking these because there's so much information. Um, the other other designs that you'll find with Sashiko stitching are waves, mountains, flowers, feathers. You'll find the diamonds, and they use what they call grids, which is just little dots on on the fabric but you use them as a guideline because like I said, they refined, there are experts who will do refined sashiko stitching. So, um, and that's where you'll find um, more of the, um, the diamond and the circle designs. So um, that's what the sashiko stitching. This brings us to Cantha. So Cantha is distinguished basically between very large spaces between the stitches. The spaces are larger than the stitches. And I show you how to do a, a typical Cantha uh, running stitch. And Cantha references both the finished piece, so you can say I have a Cantha quilt, or a Cantha um as a running stitch as a stitch so uh that's why i added it to this and cantha um uh really originates from um bengali uh eastern india the women of eastern india they would uh create cantha pieces and wrap these pieces around their jewelry or around a special book and they and they are and it's considered one of the earliest embroideries uh, techniques and it goes back to like um, 1500 BCE. So that's the Cantha stitch. Very interesting. Now, embroidery is equally as interesting. They all are to me. And I mean, I could get, get so much more history for you on here, but because we're just kind of looking at the origin and uh, connecting it to its culture is uh, just fascinating. But the embroidery stems from China and the East. So um, it goes back to 30,000 BC, where they actually found a quilt uh, fossilized, <laughs> if you can believe that. So, um, but uh, it was, it was, they could see that it was um, hand stitched. They could see that it, it was, um, um, clothing. It was clothing, quilts. I guess they found these um, dating back to 30,000 BCE or BC. I'm sorry. So um, you find embroidery used in China back in 600, um, 618 to the 900s. And, um, and then you see them embroidering in gold with gold threads. And you see this in the Qing Dynasty, uh, in silk robes in 16, 
44 and early 1900s. You see more embroidery uh, in the Dutch East Indies in the 17 and 1800s. Again, silk embroidery. And then you see geometric patterns back in the 16th and 17th centuries from the Islamic Persian areas. And, you know, in Sashiko stitching, right, as they developed and advanced in the Sashiko visible stitching, they started to do geo patterns also, but that was later on when they refined their Sashiko stitching. So anyway, that's a little bit on the stitches and the other stitches I wanted to mention to you that is kind of new terminology I'm seeing is resilient stitching. And there's a book out on resilient stitching by an author that I have a book on, Slow Stitch, and her name is Claire Wesley. I'm sorry, Claire is her first name, C-L-A-I-R-E, Wellesley Smith. And I'll write down her name in the bio. But she has another book out called Resilient Stitching. So she's connecting that type of stitching like to emotional well-being. And, you know, really, in my opinion, all of these type of uh, stitches stem um, or at least bring, I would say, bring you to or in or around <laughs> a meditative type of um, mindset. Because you're focusing, you're creating, and um, there. Then there's even doodle stitching. So I will. There's also a, a person, and I think it's called DoodleStitch.com. But again, I will put her her name out there uh, in the bio. Um, she gives you very simple methods of stitching doodle stitching. So just like you're doodling when you draw, this is doodle stitching and putting stitches to those pictures. So she gives you different methods on how to do that. So I thought that was really very interesting. And um, so all in all, I feel like these um, uh, methods, uh, they're all from different cultures. And I think when we we look at um, uh, something like slow stitching, it it's kind of pulling from these different cultures almost. And um, but there's one difference: the slow stitching is saying you know one stitch at a time, and um, and yes, the sashiko stitching is multiple stitches at a time, really. And then kantha is uh, that is also a running stitch. Um, when you learn to do it, you can do multiple stitches at a time. <laughs> so there's are some differences there. And of course, in the mindset. And, um, and, and of course, for uh, the reason, the reason. And uh, you find a lot in history, the reason was out of necessity. But we see with embroidery, you you find um, a lot in the history that it was for decorative purposes. So, you know, to make a beautiful a robe embroidered in gold for a king. <laughs> so um, anyway, so next up, we will continue uh, with the stitching and show you some stitching. Okay, so before we get to the, um, the demos, I want to share a couple of things with you. Um, there was a project, it's called, and I'm going to put it in the content, it's called Manitoulin Circle Project. There were 140 quilters working on this project. This project was um, referred to as a meditation piece um, about the earth, about the environment, and caring for it. So there are 140 quilters. This is the beautiful thing about quilting, especially if you're going to do it in panels. You can get together and have a social circle and really connect with each other, people who are like-minded with yourself, right? And uh, so the, these artists were in Canada. And um, so I will try to find a link to the image of this project. I have an image of it in the book. 
So, um, but I will see if I can find this, but it's called Man Natulin. And now there's a, just a couple of more types of stitching I want to share with you. Um, like you have the slow stitching. Now I'm seeing the word resilient stitching. Again, this is connected to a mindset. This is connected actually to emotional well-being. And there's a book out on it by the author of a book I have on slow stitching, and her name is Claire Wellesley, Wellesley Smith. So I will put her name also in the bio. Um, now, there's a couple of other stitch stitching I want to share with you. Um, doodle stitching. <laughs> and it is just what it says it is. There is um, someone out on the internet. Her name is stitchdoodles.com. So you might want to check her out, especially if you're a doodler, because she uh, gives you tips and I guess simple ways and methods to do a type of uh, very simple embroidery to do your doodling. And um, then there's another type of stitch. And it's free motion machine stitch. Now, I do a lot of that anyway. But the difference is, is that you uh, start to, um, well, let's see, I guess I don't have one here. But what you do is you're kind of draw, you draw with the, uh, you remove the foot of the machine, of your sewing machine, and you draw. So, um, that's another type of stitching. So, um, anyway, I wanted to share all of these with you. And now we're going to get into the, a demo of a couple of different stitches. So with stitching, when you're creating a Boro piece, you can use these patches that you're using to build your piece as very specific designs. So you, I'm going to put this down and I'm going to show you what I mean. So let's say I want to do a cantha stitch. This is a long piece here. Let's just, I could start right in the middle there if I want to. So um, cantha stitches you'll see typically with uh, quilting, a very big quilt. And, but now this is the cantha stitch. So the stitch is going to be in this case, you look, you can make it long, but if I make it really long, then I have to make the space longer than the stitch because that's the key principle to cantha. So I'm going to make a small stitch here like that. And it's not like sashiko. I'm not doing these like all at once. Although I have seen um, in the past, I have seen experts in cantha stitching do that. They actually do running stitches, like a lot of them at a time, and then pull the thread up. But I'm going to show you one at a time. So this is a stitch, and so I want my space longer. So I'm kind of eyeing this, but I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it about two, three times longer. I guess it's about three times. Okay, and then I'm going to make a small stitch again. And if I had uh, more room, I, I would maybe do two or three of these in a row. So I'm using the same type of spacing. And, you know, I'm covering um territory or I'm covering area much quicker than if I was doing and you'll see my smaller my um sashiko stitching. So this is Cantha stitching. And again the principle of it is your spacing between your stitches is larger than your stitch. So um and it's repetitive, and it's used um, in Eastern India. It goes way back, and it's beautiful, and it is considered an embroidery. So, but you see how much of this 
we are covering in real time. And I'm going slow, actually. Now, and again, I mean, this is a beautiful, I think any hand stitching is um, definitely meditative because you're focusing, you're in your zone, you're creating. I don't see how it could be anything else, right? I don't see how it could be <laughs> anything else but meditative. So that's the cantha. So I'm going to leave that like that because that's a demo. And I have another needle here um, ready to go. And I will show you. So now I can move to a different, let's say I move to a different uh, patch. And this is, by the way, you will see this today in Boro inspired pieces where the different patches have different um, stitch stitches. They just do. They encompass some embroidery or whatnot. So this, um, I can do a typical, let's see here. I could do, I'm going to bring it this way. Hopefully you can see it. And I can do a running stitch on this one. And you see the difference because the stitches are going to be a regular uh, spacing. It's not going to be um, extra spacing in between these stitches. They're going to be a regular type of spacing in between the stitches. So um, it's your typical, all the other stitches, actually, historically anyway, are based on a running stitch. Now, when I come to this, I'm stopping because that's a different um, material, it's a different design, it's a different pa um, patch. And I'm going to turn and just go back the other way. And if you notice, because this is Sashiko stitching, I am doing running stitches. So that's what I'm doing. And this is creating a four-row piece. So here I did two or three stitches at a time. Now, when, Bor when uh, Sashiko stitching was done historically, way back in the 1600s or whatnot, they were creating based out of necessity. So they were not worried that each each stitch was absolutely perfect. That came later on. So I adapt the mindset of meditation and the humbleness of creating something using all recycled pieces, which they did then. And that concept is not new, uh, even though it seems uh, you're hearing new words, you know, slow stitching, resilient stitching, doodle stitching. You're hearing these new uh, stitches, but that's because of the mind set. Uh, not necessarily that it's a whole new concept, but they're just uh, trying to say, hey, this is a nice, um, almost therapeutic, you know, way to um handle a problem whether it be uh, mental emotional uh whatever it is that you're dealing with right or just everyday problems or issues um you find you find refuge in your stitching so um that's the sashiko stitching that's the cantha stitching and um, the this is the chain stitch, and this chain stitch is very simple. You just go down like you're going to do your stitch, and then you come up just 
just a tiny little bit there and you pull your needle through the loop. Just make sure you put it through the loop because that way you are now making a chain. And then when you turn, you're, uh, you know, you've done your chain here. You're just going to do the same thing. You just, um, when you do your next stitch, you're going to leave a little loop there. So then when you come back up, I'm running out of thread here. When you come back up, you're just pulling it through your loop. And so really with this stitch, you do not have any spaces you have this i knew this was coming off the but you do not have any spaces there so that's the chain stitch i want to show you the seed stitch seed stitching are very teeny tiny um stitches that look like seeds so i'm going to put the camera down and show you it's super simple and um, I like to pick uh, particular uh, special designs that I think the seed stitching will look um, especially interesting against or on. Now, seed stitching is you pull the needle up through, and you're not going to do a regular length stitch or a long stitch. You're going to do a very teeny stitch so you're going to go one like one tiny little space over and pull the needle through and then you're going to go another direction so you're not going in vertical you're not going horizontal so you're going in different directions just as if you drop a package of seeds and you see them in different directions. So that is the seed stitching. Now the seed stitching, in my opinion, covers more area on your fabric quicker than a vertical, a vertical, a horizontal, a running stitch. So that's the seed stitching. The um, other stitches that we talked about, the doodle, <laughs> And the resilient, you can apply um, your own type of stitching. With slow stitching, you can apply your own type of stitching to that, as I understand it. So if there's a specific stitch that you just love to use, that's the whole point of slow stitching, is to relax and to be able to slow down. So um, now embroidery... Um, there's different ways you can embroider. You can get patterns. Today, especially nowadays, there's so many. You can even print out um, different photos and um, kind of just follow the stitches there. Um, and again, you know, an embroidery is also a relaxing art. And um, it's a beautiful one at that. So, um, Anyway, I hope that that helps a little bit. And um, so each of these blocks, when I finish this, because I'm going to make each of these patches different, I will come back and share this with you along with sharing all of these in more detail with you after I put their bows and snaps on them and, uh, and when they're ready to go to the art guild. So that, that will be within, actually, shortly within this next week so um anyway if you have any questions please let me know i'd love to hear from you and uh, we will be getting in the next video i wanted to go through the stitches first and um because when i start my next um quilt it's going to be a little different from the other quilts that i do i'm mixing methods all the time. So I wanted to go over these different stitches and the different cultures that they originate from to uh, share with you that there are different uh, methods and you can just pull them all together and create your masterpiece.
that concludes our video for today. If you enjoyed it and you liked it, you got a little bit something out of it, please consider to subscribe. I would love to have you on board. And um, I love your comments. Keep them coming. And I am going to start another um, larger quilt, like 40 by 40, and um, more in a using slow motion sewing with the sewing machine and my sashiko stitching. So uh, we'll see you very soon. Have a beautiful day.